Good morning. Happy Thursday. Today is Thursday, October 15th, and we are here today for our second read aloud of the week. On Tuesday, we read about how Chipmunk got his stripes, and it was something called a folktale. And if you remember from Tuesday, we talked about folktales being stories that are told from a different culture. They originate from a different culture, and they're usually told by word of mouth, which just means that someone told the stories out loud, and then someone else passed them on out loud, and then eventually they were written down. Now, Tuesday's story, if you remember, was this, How Chipmunk Got His Stripes, and it was a Native American folktale. So that culture was Native American. Today's culture is going to be different than the Native American culture. And today's cultural folktale comes from the Botswana culture, which is in Africa. Now, before I tell you the title, I want you to remind you of what our skill is this week. Our skill is focusing on comparing, remember, and contrast two stories. When we compare, we talk about things that are the same. When we contrast, we talk about things that are different. Last week, we compared and contrasted the lessons and the characters. This week, we are comparing and contrasting the actual folktale, including the lessons, as well as the different cultures that these folktales come from. So like I said, we are going to talk about things that are similar between today's story and Tuesday's story and things that are different from today's story and Tuesday's story. Now, today's story is called Honey, Honey, Lion. Now, I want you to take some time and think, why did I say it that way? Why did I say Honey, Honey, Lion? There's a couple of different reasons that I said that. The first reason is these three little dots. And these three little dots mean to take a pause. The next three little dots, you're going to pause again. And the last word is bigger and bold. And it also has an exclamation mark. So that's why I read it a little bit differently. Now, our author today is Jan Brett, and our author is actually the same as our illustrator. So Jan Brett is an author illustrator that is very well known for her detailed pictures. So as I'm reading, I want you to take a very close look at some of her illustrations. Okay, And like I said, this is a story from Africa. So it's the Botswana culture in Africa. Okay, so today's story is going to be about a friendship, and it's going to be about kind of like a little relationship between a honey guide, which is a bird, and a honey badger, okay, right here. So we have the honey guide, and we have the honey badger. Hmm, let's look at our title, honey, honey. I wonder what that means, and then I wonder why they put this one in here. Now, remember, this is a folk tale, so it's going to try to teach us a lesson. So as I'm reading, I want you to see if you can figure out what the lesson is that the author wants us to learn. Honey, honey, lion. Take a look at these illustrations. Bring it up a little bit more for you guys. So nice and detailed. Okay, again, it's a story from Africa. In Africa, the honey guide and the honey badger are partners when it comes to honey. The little bird follows a bee to its hive, and then she leads the honey badger there to break it open with its big, strong claws. Together, they share the sweetness, and that is the way it has always been. So they are actually using one of our seven habits. See if you can figure out which habit they are using. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with working together. All right, again with the details of this illustration. Maybe this day Badger was hungrier than usual. Maybe he forgot about Honey Guide, who showed him the way. Or could he have been thinking, my strong claws do all the hard work. Whatever the reason, that day, Badger would not 
share. Okay, so here we have our first question. So that's not very nice of Badger to not share. How do you think the honey guide feels? Hmm. How do you think the honey guide is feeling here? Because he led the badger to the honey. So he guided the badger to the honey and then he doesn't even get any. Wonder how he's feeling. Honey guide scolded badger as he waddled back to the jackalberry tree, his tummy almost touching the ground. She fussed and fumed as he tried to fit into his burrow. Finally, she cried out for all the animals to hear, no fair, no fair. Soon, all the guinea hens were broadcasting the news. Honey guide is in a major rage. What do you guys think it means to be in a major rage? Hmm. Take a look at our honey guide. How is honey guide feeling? But Badger didn't hear. He was sound asleep, smiling, snoring, and hiccuping from his big meal. Grup! Badger roared out the loudest hiccup of all, and its deep, low grumble gave Honey Guide an idea. Hmm. What do you think Honey Guide's idea is going to be? Remember, when you see one of these post-it notes, I want you to pause the video and take some think time. Don't just keep going through the video. Really take some time to think. What do you think Honey Guide's idea is going to be? The next morning, Badger woke up hungry, his tummy flat as a pancake. That's when Honey Guide flew by, heading for the great gray Baobab. Honey, 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 she cried, grinning. The little bird zigzagged over its large roots. Pitter-patter. Badger ran after her. Pitter-patter. All right. See here. So this pitter-patter is something we call an onomatopoeia. Kind of a silly, funny name. Onomatopoeia. Hmm. What do you think that means? Pitter-patter, pitter-patter. Another onomatopoeia might be splish, splash. Splish, splash. Hmm. What do we think an onomatopoeia is? Then I want you to think, where do you think Honey Guide is going to guide Badger this time? Honey Guide flew low across the water hole. Splish, splash. Badger paddled after her. Splish, splash. Honey Guide glided to the top of a termite mound and bounced on one foot. Sprung. Badger scrambled to the top and bounced off. Sprung. Honey Guide landed on a hollow log. It echoed as she stomped along. Boom, boom. Badger hurried to catch up. Boom, boom. Next, Honey Guide flitted through a stand of papyrus. Tall, dry reeds waved back and forth. Clickety click. Badger trapezed along. Muttering, where is that honey? The papyrus rattled as he went by. Clickety click. All right, so let's look at our question here. So the honey guide and the honey badger have been running for quite a long time. Do you think that the honey guide is actually leading badger to honey? Hmm. Or is the honey guide leading badger somewhere else? Where could they be going? Honey Guide led him through a field of golden bristle grass. Swish, swish. Badger huffed and puffed, but the thought of the delicious meal waiting for him kept him going. Swish, swish.
By now, Badger was tired and wet, itchy and sore. But he didn't slow down because Honey Guide was just ahead of him. She flashed her wings, fanned her tail, and dove under an acacia tree. Badger charged in after her, singing triumphantly, Honey! Honey! Hmm. I wonder what comes next. Let's look at our question here. Hmm. Something is different about this page. What do you think is different? It's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to zoom in a little bit and see if you can tell what might be different on this page. What's different about this? Look very closely at the illustration. What do you think is behind this flap? Hmm. So remember what the honey badger said. Honey, honey, lion. Lion, lion, lion. Badger turned on his tail and ran. Swish, swish through the grass. Clickety click into the papyrus. Boom, boom over the hollow log. Sprung over the termite mound. Splish, splash across the water hole. Pitter, patter over the boab roots. Badger dashed into his burrow. Honey Guide cheered. In a flash, Badger was as far from the entrance as he could be. Right behind him was Lion's huge paw batting the air, but he could not reach him. And that's the closest any animal could be to an angry lion and live to tell the tale. So let's look at our question here. So it says, Badger was lucky. I hope he, he learned his lesson. Do you think the honey badger learned his lesson? Hmm. What do you think? Do you think the honey badger learned his lesson or do you think he might do the same thing again? I'm trying to take some time to think about that. Remember, this is a folk tale, so it's trying to teach us a lesson. That evening, Mongoose squeaked to Elephant who trumpeted to Hippo, who bellowed to Warthog, who squealed to Bishop Bird, who piped to Hyena, who whooped to Zebra, who snorted to Giraffe, who was overheard by Guinea Hen, who bugled it far and wide. It was the Bush Telegraph, and it said, If Honey Guide leads you to a beehive, be sure and reward her, or next time, she will lead you to a lion. The end. All right. So, like I said, this was another folk tale. This folk tale came from Africa. But there's another lesson to learn in this folk tale. I want you to see if you can figure out what this lesson was. In the last lesson, we talked about bragging and teasing. There wasn't a lesson about bragging and teasing in this story. But there was a lesson that goes along with that. So in today's story, I think that Honey Badger learned a lesson. And the lesson that Honey Badger learned was to share. Because this whole time, the Honey Guide was trying to be a good friend and lead the Honey Badger to the honey so that they could share it. But then that one day, Honey Badger got all the way there and decided, no thanks, I want it all for myself. So then Honey Guide decided to get revenge. And in order to get revenge, Honey Guide had to be a trickster. And a lot of times in folk tales, you will find tricksters. And that just means that it's a character who likes to trick other characters. So in this story, the Honey Guide was the trickster. And the badger 
was the one who learned the lesson. All right, so as you are listening to this story and as you are completing it, I want you to think about how this folktale and how Tuesday's folktale were similar and how they were different. Remember using those big words, compare and contrast. All right, and don't forget what a folktale is. A folktale is just a story that originates from a different culture that usually teaches us a lesson and sometimes has trickster characters in it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed our folktales this week. I will see you guys again next week for two new stories. Have a great weekend. See you later.